Hello everybody, Bruce here with a video lecture on Chapter 5, Module 5, so let's get going. So, how to use the CSS box model for spacing, borders, and backgrounds. Um, couple things, right? The applied objectives are given an HTML document, create CSS style rules, that use the CSS box model to apply spacing, borders, and backgrounds. The knowledge objectives are describe the use of the box model, explain how the box model can be used to control spacing between the headings and paragraphs on a page, describe the effect of collapsed margins. I know there is a quiz question on that. Describe the use of a reset selector Describe these properties for a block element in a box model. The height, width, margin, padding, border, background, color, and background image. And describe these CSS3 features for formatting boxes, rounded corners, shadows, and background gradients. So the box model, it's a core concept, in fact, let me just um, bring up, um, not that, let me bring up Chrome, if I can escape out of here, bring up Chrome, go into modules, and this may change for future classes, go into module 5, but there is something right here, read, watch, the box model explained, all right? And I created, actually, earlier today, the 16-minute 16 16-minute video that goes through and demonstrates the box model. In fact, I actually give you some code here that I use in the video so you can follow along with me, all right? So let's talk about the box model. Um, the box model, any like paragraph block level element, uh, actually paragraph, comma, block level element, div, header, main, those elements have this box around them, all right? And in fact, you know something? I'm going to live code something here. Let me, let me do this. Let me make this bigger. I have that code editor. Let me fire up a new window. And let me create a, a new folder. I'm going to put it on my desktop. I'll just call it actually um, let me just do it box model okay and I'm gonna say whoops select and I'm just gonna create a new file I'll call it box.html and I'll use Emmet to create a new HTML file and I'm gonna create just a paragraph of text here I'm gonna put some lorem ipsum text in there so now I have this beautiful web page. It's it's great. Uh, in fact, here is the web page. If I bring it up in, um, see it? It's right here in what do you call it? In um, live server. There it is, right? And let me show you. And I'm going to do this by using embedded styles, ones that I don't want you to use instead of having a separate style sheet. But I'm allowed to do it, and you're not allowed to do it. So let me do this. Let me say, hey. Um, paragraph selector, put a border around yourself. I want it to be one pixel solid um, black. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let me go back. And you can see here, I'm going to zoom this in. Right? There's this box, right? Actually, there's a border around this thing right now, right? So check this out. Let me go back here. And now, if I say, hey, add some padding, um, and I'm going to add uh, 20 pixels of padding. And you can see here, now we have the content right here. And then we have padding on the top, right, bottom, and left of 20 pixels. All right? So this content has padding around it. All right? And notice that the, um, uh, no, let me just show you this. Let me just show you. See, no matter what size I do it, right, it's still going to have, you know, the padding around it. I'm just uh, zooming in on the window, all right? 
And now what I want to show you is if I put margin, and I'll put, uh, I don't know, 20 pixels of margin, watch what happens. Notice how the box shifted, right? So the box shifted inward. Let me, let me uh, go back here, undo that, save it. See where the box is now? And see where the box is now if I put 20 pixels of margin. Do you see that? So what happens is this is the content. This is the padding. And I put the border here on purpose. The padding, think of it like a FedEx or UPS package. You have your new stuff that you ordered. It's in the box. And then they put padding to protect it, right? It goes around your precious little Amazon package, whatever it may be, right? And then here's the box, which is actually the border. And then on the outside, think of it as all these packages on uh, a delivery truck, right? There's a little space between the boxes so they don't all get, you know, uh, squished together, right? So this is kind of how the box model works. And I'm going to go back to this drawing right here, right? And what it's showing is the content right here. And then you have the padding. See how it says padding top. And then here it says uh, padding padding right. And then where are you padding? Where's padding bottom? Padding bottom right here, right? And then padding left right right here, padding left. And then you have this border, right? And then you have the margin on the outside. And that margin is being represented by that dotted line right there, right? So this is how block level elements get separated from one another using this box model, all right? Now, let me just, I'm gonna skip a little ahead. So here's one paragraph. Now let me put in a second paragraph right here. Okay, I'm gonna right click, copy, and I'm gonna paste in that paragraph, use my format on save option to make it look good, right? And I'm gonna go back here. Now I have two paragraphs, right? Now, you see this, this, um, this margin around here? Watch this. If I get rid of the margin here, let me do this. Whoops. Um, you can't tell it here, but um, there's actually what we call default margin. And again, I'm skipping all over the place here. So check this out. If I say, hey, any and all elements on a web page, set your margin to zero. So look what happened now. See, the boxes are up against one another. That's because, and this is called a reset, by the way. It's a little further on in the slide deck. But now these boxes are kissing. They're right up against one another because we set the default margin for all elements to zero. By default, browsers do put in margin around certain elements to, um, to space them apart. So now if I go down here and I say, hey, margin 20 pixels, I'm getting 20 um, margins, uh, 20 pixels of margin, all right? So the other thing you can do as well, it, like I have padding 20 pixels. What this means is it means this. It means top, uh, right, bottom, left. So those sides in the box, right, top, right, bottom, left, are going to get padding, okay? So what you can do right? There's a shorthand, right? I'm going to comment that out. Oops. What am I doing? I'm using the wrong, I'm using the wrong um, uh, comments here. Why didn't somebody tell me? So what I'm going to do here is I have padding. And what you can do is you can say padding on the top, I want to be 20. On the right, I want it to be 50. Uh, on the bottom, I want it to be 100. And on the left side, I want it to be five, okay? So watch this. See what it did? You see what it did to the padding? How I was able to specify for the different sides, right? Inside the box, right? The border, different types of padding. So that nomenclature, top, right, bottom, left, right? Top, right, bottom, left. And you can also do it this way, where you can say padding, 
uh, top and bottom. Let's make 50 pixels top and bottom and right and left 100. So watch this. Let me comment out this one right there. So you see what it did here, right? It added top and bottom of the same, which was 50, top and bottom, and then 100 left and right. 100 left, 100 right. So these are shorthands, and the same shorthands work for the margins, okay? So check this out, okay? What if I do this? What if I say, hey, paragraph, make your width, um, I don't know, 500 pixels. Make your width 500 pixels. So let me dial this down. So see what happens here? These boxes now are not taking up the full width because block level elements take up 100% of the browser window. With the width specified to 500 pixels, they'll only go 500 pixels wide, okay? So let me just backtrack a little and I'm gonna say padding 50 pixels all around. Actually, let me leave this here. And I'll say padding of 50 pixels, 50 pixels all around, okay? Whoops, this one. So we have 50 on the top, right, bottom, and left. Now, we specified that this element should be 500 pixels wide. You see that right there? So we have a 500 pixel width, we have a one pixel border, and then we have padding and margin. So this box that we said, make that paragraph, not that box, well, that box, 500 pixels wide, is now bigger than 500 pixels wide because we applied padding, which pushed the box out. We have one pixel here on the right and one pixel here on the left, and we have some margin. So the width of this element now is actually the margin plus the left border, plus the padding, plus the content, plus the right padding, plus the width of the right border, plus the right margin. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. So just know that. There are other ways we're going to learn in the future to use what's called box sizing to uh, change that behavior. But there you go. All right. So back to the box model. All right, so this is what I just covered, uh, where you, you're calculating, I didn't do the height, but I did the width of the box. The, um, the uh, height is the same thing, all right? Um, and here is just from the textbook, right? They have this box model. In fact, I think I have this code right, uh, no, it's not there. Uh, is it right here? Let's see box model. Here it is. Here's the code, right? It's right from Canvas, by the way. So if you go into Canvas, I know I'm going all over the place here, but if you go into Canvas, I actually give the code that I'm using in my demonstration right here. It says example code for textbook chapter five. So that's this file right here is this stuff I'm working with right here. So here's just another box model file, and I'll bring it up in, um, what do you call it, Google Chrome. And they just use a different, uh, what do you call it, different, um, different types of borders to show you different things that are going on, right? So let me see, um, back to the slide. So we have the body and the main element, and then we have an H1 and a paragraph. Again, this is just sample markup, all right? And then, whoops, and then in the CSS, and we'll go to mine in a second, they specified that, ugh, I hate when this happens, kids. Um, they specified that the body, right, has a border of three, pixel, uh, three pixels dotted black, okay? And we're gonna be covering this, but the border property has a width of three pixels. The style is dotted and the border color is black. And the body itself has a margin of 10 pixels. The main element, right, which contains that text, has a border of two pixels solid black, a width of 500 pixels, a margin all around, top, right, bottom, left, of 20 pixels, 
and then padding of 10 pixels, and then they styled the paragraphs and H1s with a border of one pixel uh, dash black, and they gave it some padding, and then they also applied another selector specifically for the H1 that gave it a margin. Now, um, this is uh, top, right, bottom. There's zero for the left, okay? Uh, and then padding left of 15 pixels. This is another nomenclature that you can write. Padding dash left, padding dash top, margin dash top, margin dash right. And the same thing for the paragraph down here. So you get this screen right here, which I showed you in my browser earlier. And that's a really good way of seeing the boxes that are around the H1 and the paragraph, the main, and the body. All right. So I want you to download that code and play with it because this is a really, really important concept. Did I say it was important? All right. So when you have a content area, such as the body, um, right, or a paragraph, or a division, or a header, or just about any block le level element, you could set its width to a, a pixel amount, a percentage amount, or, or, or auto. Um, so let me just show you that for a second, this auto stuff, because I think it's an important for me to go over. Let me go back to was this our little thing here? Yeah. So let me just show you this page for a second. There's that. Now those paragraphs are on the left-hand side of the screen because they um, th that's just the way the page is now. And my what I want to show you, right, is I'm going to say, hey, body, you're 1,200. Oh, wrong screen. Right, right. No, is it this one? No, this is something else. Here we go. Sorry about that. I have a lot of uh, screens up. So we don't have a selector for the body. So let's put that up, body. And then let's give that whole page, that body, a width of, I don't know, 900 pixels. And then let's say margin on the top and bottom is zero, so no margin. But the left and right, we're going to say auto adjust. So watch this now. Watch this. Let me find my wind. Ah, look at that. So the reason why they're showing um, like this is because I have some margin set. So let me go back. Uh, let me go back here to this margin and just cut it out for the paragraphs. Oops. And why is my page, why is my page uh, looking not perfectly centered? Let me go back, see what I'm doing wrong. Okay, uh, width, 900 pixels, margin, paragraph width, padding. Huh, what's going on? Oh, 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 body, body, width, 900 pixels, margin, did I spell everything right? Zero, auto, and I gave it a width, okay? So let me just, actually, let me just comment out this stuff for a second. Whoops. Let me just do this. Let me get rid of the width, okay? Let me get rid of the border, and let me get rid rid of padding, and go back to my. Okay, those are centered. Do you see that? You see those paragraphs? How they're centered on the page now? So let me step back into it a little bit. All right. So I'm gonna say, hey, let's go back and give our paragraphs a width. Okay. Now the the issue going on here. Let me uh, let me show you this. Okay. So the width is 500 pixels. Okay. The width is 500 pixels. Uh, actually, I'm just having a brain fart here. Why? What's going on here? Margin zero auto. Oh, it's because I gave them a width. So let me just do this. Let's get rid of this width. Okay. There they are. There's our beautiful paragraphs. It's because I gave it a width, all right? And it was making, it was stopping there. So that's my fault, all right? I'll own that, all right? So the other thing, let's give it a border, right? There we go. Let's give it a border, okay? And we'll go back. There, see, we have our border, right? We have no margin or padding right now, right? And then, sorry, I'm just really having a bad scrolling night. And then let's give it some padding. Okay, but let's give it 
just all around, I don't know, 100 pixels, 100 pixels. See that? So now, by using, getting back to the point here, setting a width on the body and setting the right and left margins to top and bottom is zero, um, right and left is auto, we can get centered content on a page. Do you see that? Do you see that? That's, that's, uh, that's, that, that's what you want to do, right? If you want to have a page that's like that. Most pages are like that, right? And if you change the width to, say, I don't know, 1200, right? You can see the page uh, expands, all right? So, uh, yeah, so that's what we were covering over here with this auto. Uh, and then you also have the ability to set the height of a content area. Um, so if I wanted to set the height of these paragraphs to, let me just be careful here, height, I don't know, 300 pixels. See how big they, see how high they are now? We changed the height. We changed the height. You see that right there? Height is now changed. And if I make it half that height, right, 150, right, you see that? You got that? But what's happening is, since we have this padding here, it's actually pushing out the box. It's pushing out the box. So if we get rid of that, you can see everything gets to 150 pixels. Because remember, everything's additive. It's the width defined plus the padding, top and bottom or right and left, and then the border and then the margin, right? All right, I know, it's confusing, but watch, I have two other videos in Canvas on this stuff, and you'll totally, um, you, you, you gotta play with this stuff. That's how you're gonna get the muscle memory working. Shorthand, margin dash top, half an M. Margin, uh, look at that, margin dash top. These are other shortcuts, uh, shorthands. Margin dash top, margin dash right, margin dash bottom, margin dash left. And I showed you earlier how you can write all four right, uh, values in one statement. Or you can do it separately like this. It's just up to you, all right? Then these are the other shorthands, right? Margin, 1M goes for all four sides. Margin, this is top and bottom, right and left, or left and right, just like I showed you before. And then the first three are top, right, and left, and bottom. Top, right, and left, and bottom. Top, right, and left, and bottom. And same thing, top, right, bottom, left, when you have all four. So it's top, right, bottom, left, like a clock, all right? Same thing with padding. You got the same nomenclature, right? Padding's inside the box. Uh, margin is outside the box. All right. So they had this uh, web page in the book, and they showed you how they applied a width like I did. They gave it a margin with the auto uh, values like I did. They created the same margin and padding. This is a reset, by the way, because they set the margin and padding for H1 h2 and h3 and paragraphs to zero and that's kind of what i did before with that asterisk again it's called a reset they did this well they set some margins for the unordered list the padding bottom for the list items for the paragraphs they gave it uh some padding and for the header they gave it some margin bottom right so margin bottom right is going to push stuff below it further down right so let's just go back to this example for a second you see these two paragraphs right here? So if I specify here, whoops, margin dash bottom, and I say 2EM, 2M, right? 2M, and I go back to my, where are you, right here? So now there's two Ms, right, from the, bot, from the bottom of this to the, um, to the top of this, there's two Ms, all right? So it's outside the box, remember that, right? You use margin to space elements apart, right? Margin, if I make it, you know, 12M, right? There they are, they're further apart. Now this question always comes up and it has to do with what we call collapsed borders, right? So if we specify that the, um, let me see um, how this will work here. Let me, actually, we'll come back to it in a minute, all right? So, there is that. Here's the reset I did earlier with the asterisk where I set all elements, margin and padding to zero, okay? Um, borders, 
borders or something you can add to block level elements. You can give it, uh, the border is the all encompassing um, property like I did, right? Did I do, yeah, right here on line 20, border, one pixel, solid, and then the color black. And you could do uh, M's, pixels, you could do here uh, different uh, styles like dotted, dash, double, outset, inset, all these different values. You can go look them up on the internet. And then the color, right? You can pick the color of the border. Now, when you do it this way, you're doing all four sides the same thing. And as the slide indicates here, right, you could do border dash, and what side means is like border left, border right, uh, border top, border bottom, and you can specify a width, right, the border width, uh, four different sides as well, border style, border color, border side width, that's what I was kind of saying before, you could say border left width, border left style, border left color. So you have a lot of flexibility what you can do with each side of, uh, of a box or an element that's a block level element that puts a box around itself. All right. Um, so again, I covered this earlier. Okay. Uh, you can set the width of borders. I'm not going to go through that right now. Uh, and then you have something called border radius, which, uh, which is cool. So watch this. Um, so these paragraphs, right, have borders. And what you can do now is you can say, hey, border radius, right, some math stuff, and make it 12 pixels. So let's go back and notice now, I'll zoom it in here. Whoops, not too much. See these borders, right? We have these radiuses, right, these rounded corners on the box. So. You could do that with uh, border radius, and then you could do stuff like this, right? You can say border dash top dash left radius, and you can, I don't know, let's make it big, 20 pixels, right? So um, look what happened there. It kind of got uh, the, the text because we have no padding, but you see that 20 pixel right there? And look at the other corners, see? They're square. Right, so we created like this this fictitious faux tab, right? So let me uh, do this. Let me just add padding. Actually, we have padding, right? I can go add that guy back in, right? And now you can see we have our rounded corner. Now let's say we wanted to do the lower right, right, with a radius, right? We can say border dash bottom dash uh, right dash radius, and then let's make it 20 pixels, right? So there it is. So we have that corner with a radius and that corner with a radius. So let's just have some more fun, right? Let's say border right uh, width, and we'll make it 10 pixels solid, uh, a blue color. Uh oh, I did something wrong, kids. Uh, border right. Oh, I got to give it a style. Border right style let's make it solid and uh let's see and we need a color too actually for the right side border dash right dash color and let's just make it uh black one two three four five six semicolon and we still have no so what did bruce forget border right with border right style border right uh color what are we missing here Border right with style color. Uh, oh, look at this. This is wrong. Let's do this. This is wrong. How come nobody stopped me? See? Now we got it. See how we have that thick border on the right? So we could do the same thing, right? We can say border dash left dash width. And if we, if we say 20 pixels, remember, right? There's nothing, whoops, there it is, right? There it is, right? It's going to take the default that we set up here for border, right? So there you go. Play around with this stuff. You know, I can only talk about it so much, but, you know, it's not like wood shop where you're going to cut wood and waste it or metal shop, right? It, you know, just play around with this stuff, all right? All right? All right. All right. Uh, so we covered all. Oh, box shadow. Box shadow. 
So check this out. Let's do some box shadow. Um, I'm going to get rid of these crappy borders. All right, crappy borders. Border, 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 border. And let's go back, and we have our pretty little boxes, right? And now if you say this, check this out. doesn't matter where you put these rules, right? Box dash shadow. And let's make two pixels, two pixels, two pixels, two pixels. And we'll make it uh, da, 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 which is a gray. So see what happened? See how we got this, this small little uh, shadow going on there? If you increase it, uh, if you increase, this is the blur, I think. Hold on. Is that? Yeah, I see it's a little bigger. Uh, let me make it uh, four pixels, four pixels, eight pixels. So you can see how it, you know, got a nice, nice drop shadow there. You see that? And that's that's kind of neat. In fact, uh, you're going to be using that a lot. I like a, a nice subtle drop shadow. Um, so the way the drop shadow works, bing, is uh, box shadow. It's the horizontal offset, the vertical offset, the blur radius, the spread, and the color. And I want you to play around with those to see how these various things work. Because again, if I if I explain it to you, you can't memorize it. You gotta like make mistakes. All right. Uh, border radius, box shadow. So there is like a like a little HTML area that they have. They have the right uh, top left. Top right, bottom left corners with a radius. They have a double border, and then they have a box shadow going on. So there you go. You can create these little uh, things with these block level elements. It was a section that they styled that way. All right. Um, background. So you can take right a paragraph. We have a paragraph going on here, and I apologize for my sloppy CSS. Um, by the way, this came up. Notice how I format my CSS. I put the selector, one space, the opening seagull, or brace, and then I like to have all my CSS indented just, just like that, all right? I'll show you more of this shortly, all right? So check this out. So uh, color, is it background? Oh, we're doing background color, right? Background. So let's just make it black. One, two, three, there we go. And if I do that, uh, where'd our text go? It's there, see? But now we need to say, hey, set the color, right? Because color is for the font and make it white. Ah, now we have our text. So we can affect the background color like I did just here, right? Using the colors that we learned last week. Right now, this is a simple color. It's not RGB, RGBA, HSL, or HSLA like you learned last week. Um, you can use background images too and background repeat background attachment and background position whoops i don't know why this is a ghost ghost in my machine but let me show you something i was playing with right here is this it no it's right no where are you uh come on i know i have the demo here somewhere we um where did i put it where did i put it is it this one? Oh, this this one right here. So check it out. Uh, I have this demo file right here. Look at it has. It is a body tag, right, with a division, right? Um, use divisions when there's not an HTML5 tag, like section, article, header, nav, footer, aside, main, right? And in this division, which is a block level element, I have all these paragraphs with fake text in them. They're all just paragraphs, right? And I assign this division a class of demo, right? So if, if you go into the CSS, actually, did I use CSS? I did. I did use CSS right here. I did the reset, uh, CSS reset with this asterisk here, and I got rid of the padding and margin. I gave the body a width of 1200, as you learned earlier, and margin top and bottom of zero, right and left of auto. And then here's my class definition, dot demo, right? In the HTML, it's just demo. In the CSS, you use dot demo, right? And I said, take up the entire width, which it actually does by default. I don't really need to do that. And then I use this thing called background. 
and then URL, this is the way you have to do this stuff, the URL to the this image called sidebar.png. Now, hear me out. I'm in the CSS right now, and in order to get to the images folder, I need to go up a level, that's what the dot dot slash is for, then go back into the images folder, and then get the sidebar.png. So check it out. Let me bring up the HTML. Let me bring up the HTML, and here it is. There is the background image. Here's all the text. But notice, do you all see that? Do you all see that the text is scrolling and the background is staying still? And you see this a lot on, you know, in modern web des uh, design. Don't mind the the crappy contrast, or uh, that's my fault. But the way this works is I set the background attachment, that's another CSS property, to fixed. So if I don't, right, if I don't have that and I go back to this, see how the background scrolls with the content, right? So if I put that back, right, it stays fixed. That's cool. A lot of people do that, all right? So, um, yeah, all right, let's look at some more things. Uh, background position, uh, background repeat, let's do that. So let's uncomment this one right here, background repeat. And here, I just set it, oh, sorry about that, folks, to no repeat. And what happens, see how now we just have that image right there? It's not repeating itself. It's just on the screen once, right? I can modify my CSS to say repeat across the x-axis, which goes from left to right. See that? And I can say repeat y, which will scroll down, right, the y-axis of the page, right? So you can do all these things, okay, with your background images. You can apply a background image to any block level element. A header, a footer, a main, a section, an aside, a paragraph, a block quote, an unordered list, you name it. Aside, those are all block level elements and you can do um, these types of things. Now, this one, background position, right top, check this out. Um, let me just do this. Let me say background repeat. That's that background image. And I'm going to say no repeat. And now what you'll see is it's position to the top right. Top right. You see that? Top right. Right top. If I say uh, right center, it's on the right, uh, but in the center, this way. You see that? That's kind of weird, right? So what if I do this? What if I say just center? Top center. Top center. There it is. Top center. What if I say bottom center? Whoops. Okay, there it is. It's on the bottom. So you have the ability to, you know, place that position of that particular image. Like, let's say this was a page and you wanted to put a picture of the moon up on the right-hand corner here as a background image. Uh, top right for the, what do you call it? What's that property? Background position. Boom. You're done. Okay. Again, I want you to play with this stuff. All right. All right. Back to the slides. Uh, yeah, how do you use shorthand property? We use that already. Um, there's always a shorthand property for a lot of things in CSS, but I encourage you to use the longhand property because you'll get to know the various style attributes that you can, uh, style properties that you can define. Uh, I did all this stuff, background repeat, background position. It's super cool stuff, and you're going to need it uh, to go forward. Again, play with it. Um, there's other cool stuff, this this um, linear gradient for the background image. So let me show you this. Right, This is from the sample files that I asked you to download before. So uh, gradients right here. So right here... You know, if you, um, I'm not going to go, it says two divisions with two IDs. And what, if I preview this, right, look at that. I get like, you see these things right here? I get these cool um, gradients, right, that you can use. Now, don't go bat crazy on this stuff because it's going to be hard. 
depending upon what you do for people to maybe read. Remember we talked about color contrast in the past and how it's important to people with disabilities, right? You need to have a four, four and a half to one color contrast uh, minimum. Uh, and I gave you a couple sites. So, but I do have, and I believe it's in an assignment that you have this week where you do something like this. And the way you do that is using these uh, background dash image, and then you specify. Now these, I usually just use linear gradient because it kind of works in all browsers right now. Um, but prior to that, we had to use for Mozilla browsers, use linear gradient for Chrome and so Apple Safari, use this. Uh, and for Opera, use this. But if you find that your linear gradients aren't working in a particular a browser, then uh, go back and put the browser specific prefix. That's what these are called here. All right. And you give these properties, right? Start at the left. You know, actually, let's go into the uh, slide. It tells you exactly right here, right? Direction, the color percent, color percent. You can keep putting these in here um, to change how you want uh, certain things to render. So the one I did for this, right, is this one right here. So 45 degrees, start at red, go to red 33%, then white 33%, then white 66%, all that right, right there. So that's what, what you're getting there, right? Pretty cool, right? But again, don't overdo uh, it or abuse it. So go in and play around with the, the values a little bit. Um, and uh, see how you make out. There's also a ton of resources online for these gradient backgrounds, okay? Um, yeah, so background image, we did all that stuff. Yeah, so do you remember this page, the Sorkin page that you did? Uh, probably uh, shortly I'm going to have you m uh, finish the CSS to make it look like that with a border, center it, uh, Pull these to the right with text alignment. Whoops. Uh, put a horizontal rule or a border at the bottom of something. Yeah. All right. So that's that. Okay. That's that. Um, let me go back into um, Canvas. Okay. Let me go back into, um, let me get out of full screen mode here. Whee. Um, let me go here. Clark College. I apologize if I'm talking a little fast. You can dial down the speed on the Google, I mean on the YouTube, right, when you watch these videos. Or I know some people speed it up. So, um, again, this uh, I put this in here. This is all the HTML tags we've covered. And if anything here doesn't look right to you, go back and, and look it up. Write it down. Like, like write it down and or just go try it in your browser right and i did put all the new css that i just covered in this uh, video it's right here all the chapter five css all right all the tags we've covered from modules one through four there were new there was no new html tags in uh chapter five just so you know all right so lecture videos going here zoom meetings I'm going to have, uh, if you're watching this video in the future, they may change, but Saturday and Sunday, okay? There you go. Um, what else? I gave you some additional resources um, that I want you to go uh, look at. One is HTML, HTML5 semantic elements. So when I say semantic elements, what's a section mean? What's an article mean? What's a side mean? The structure of your HTML page uh, regardless of your CSS, has meaning. Think about search engines. They, they're not looking at your pages, uh, looking at the colors and the position of everything. They're looking at what we call the semantic markup. Uh, forcing a browser refresh. When a lot of you are working on your assignments and you're looking at the page, say on the CTEC server, things aren't changing. You know you changed your CSS or your HTML, but things aren't happening. So you want to go here and learn about forcing a browser refresh, which will reload your HTML and reload your CSS. Different ways to format CSS. Uh, I explained in this uh, earlier tonight how I like to format my CSS. Um, 
So go look at the various ways. Be consistent with whatever you do. Don't be sloppy. Uh, I heard that a lot when I was in school because I have crappy handwriting, and I still do. Um, and then there's this great site called Can I Use? And uh, what Can I can I use does is if you type in some CSS or HTML, it will tell you whether the browser you're trying to like make your code work for actually works or not in that browser. So that's a super cool site. Um, so that's that. Then I have um, just the typical stuff, read, watch, the box model, uh, how to saw. Yeah, this stuff is just all reading. But then I need uh, two things. I need for you to submit screenshots of your format on save and HTML tag wrap extensions uh, working in Visual Studio Code because I'm seeing code being submitted that's not formatted correctly. Uh, and I think uh, a lot of people have not set it. Again, it's in the prior module, module four. Go look it up. Same thing, I need the HTML tag wrap extensions uh, extension installed. Uh, actually, this is a little wrong. It's just the tag wrap extension. All right. So this is non graded, but I'm going to hold you back if you don't submit uh, screenshots showing that you have those things installed. Sorry, Charlie. All right. The next thing is the one web development assignment for week number six. I have a video overview of the assignment, so you need to watch that first. And then what you're going to do is you're going to build this fictitious Gail Ujifusa Realty Incorporated. So this site has um, a header, an H1, a main, an H2, a section, an H2, some paragraphs. I see some different colored text here using a span and a class. I see emphasized uh, bolded text here. I see a bunch of links here that need to be styled to be black. Again, another section with an H2. I see uh, an unordered list there, unordered list there. I see some text here. Again, these are all different sections of the web page. I see some justified text on this section. I see another unordered list. And by the way, I see rounded corners. I see rounded corner, rounded corner, square corner, square corner, square corner, square corner, rounded corner, rounded corner, center aligned text. I see some spacing uh, here with a margin and some spacing there. That's all on you, and I give you all the instructions uh, on how to do it. I gave you a lot of code to work with. If you forgot how to style links, it's right here in this video. Uh, you're going to need to style them. Those links are not going to, I don't want them as blue, which is the default browser color. I want them as the black to match the rest of the site. And when you hover over these particular links, I want to see them underlined. So if I hover over, underline, hover over, underline, all right? So that's that, and uh, that's all I got. So again, uh, hope this helped. For those of you in the online section, uh, you know, there's a lot more on you to do since you don't have the Tuesday and Thursday or whatever day we have lectures. So we almost have four hours a week of uh, reinforcing this stuff. So if you've gotten this far and you want some extra credit, slack me the keyword remote control. All right. Thanks a lot.